the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We have been watching Jesus in the last few weeks trying to be tricked by the religious structure, the Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, all plotting to trick him. Is he for Caesar or not? Is he for the, <clears throat> the law or not? Who, who are you? They're trying to confine him uh, to their definition of him. So that's what we're working with because they, they try to give it one more shot, so they send a real expert in the law to ask him, again, are you for the law? What's the greatest commandment in the law? What's the, what's the greatest of all the laws? And, he says, and Jesus gives them an answer that uh, sticks him a little bit, to love God with all your mind, all your heart, and all your spirit, all, and love your neighbor. And he says, you answered well, because you're a man of the law. Okay, they're satisfied, but they're gonna be after him again. A little American history. And this is more to do with the first reading from Exodus about loving the alien and to take care of the poor. And so you, I would highly recommend reading that. But in 1880, President James Garfield, who didn't want to be president, was shot in Washington and did not die for, from the assassination. He died from, uh, they couldn't find the bullet and he died of uh, affection, infection. Um, the man who killed him, uh, Charles Couteau, Couteau um, was, was deranged. He, he had been a ne'er-do-well and trying to get, he wanted, I mean, he was mentally off and he wanted to be minister to Paris, to France, and kept uh, pestering Garfield and his cabinet to appoint him there. He had no credentials to do it. Um, he was so deranged that he even went and visited, had a little tour of the jail, the prison he knew that he'd be confined to. But he was doing it because God wanted him to do that. And he wanted to do it to save the Republican Party at that time that he thought Garfield was destroying. And it was God's mission for him to destroy. What's also interesting that his vice president, Charles A. Arthur, in 1882, signed the Chinese act of not belonging, of deporting and not immigrating any more Chinese. Why? Because the railroads that they worked on and dynamiting and dying from accidents, they were no longer useful to the American machine. So, no more Chinese, get rid of them. The Chinese Discrimination Act, 1882. What's going on in there? What is it to be deranged? And what's the opposite, and I was praying with this, then maybe the play on words is to be arranged. Arranging, deranging. Uh, Jesus comes to 
arrange our derangement, if you want to say. And <clears throat> that uh, we are to love the Lord with all your mind, all your heart. You can be deranged by religion. Extremes. The evil spirit loves extremes. Take it to the extremes. I can't love with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul. I can't do that with the totality of myself. So get rid of the whole thing. It's too much. Too much, or I can exaggerate and try to do that and, and, and to say, well, because I can't do it all, I'm a spiritually inferior person. I can't love the Lord that I can't see. I have a tough time loving the people I can see. And then he says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And some people say, I feel sorry for my neighbor because I don't love myself. And maybe the arrangement begins in getting our minds straight about human limitations of loving and trusting and walking faithfully with God. Love is more than an emotion, more than words. Ignatius would say, love is sharing with the beloved in the reciprocal give and take in actions. I will give you all I can. I can't give you all myself. No married couple, I'm gonna give you my whole heart, nonsense. You don't, you don't have possession of your heart enough. You don't have possession of your mind. And you can't give what you don't have. So you give what you have. Loving your neighbor, <laughs> that's the hard, I wish he wouldn't have said that. Because my neighbor is not just the person next door. For Jesus, my neighbor is anyone with whom I come in contact. Jesus makes us neighbors. I'm aware that after COVID or during COVID, people became all comfortable with not being in the community physically. I understand that in some regards, but I think the experience of being in the body of the church, of being persons, of seeing that person and that person, how do you see them? And I think that's what Jesus is rearranging. Deranged people label, Garfield was <clears throat> a threat to the United States and the Republican Party, get rid of him. What if my neighbor is anyone whom I can help God create? Is there anyone I can help God heal? It's my neighbor. And in the first reading, he says right off the bat, don't reject the alien because you are aliens yourself. Don't extort. They are not just your neighbors, but they are members of your body and you are members of their body, the body of Christ. That's the arrangement. And to look around, I, I, I think it's a very good thing to be in community and to look around. These are my brothers and sisters. These are my neighbors. And you are asking me <clears throat> to love them and to respecting boundaries and everything. I want, and to love them in act, not just words. And to take care of the orphan and the widow and the alien. No, let's be selective. I like anybody that's wearing white shirts. I don't like anybody that has this 
language or this physical defect or this coming from this part of town, whatever. That's, that's to be deranged in a spiritual sense. And Jesus comes to rearrange, get us in order that I am your neighbor and you are mine in Christ. And I look around in church and say, <clears throat> I can be pretty selective in who is my neighbor and what I'm going, the degree to which I'm going to share what I have and receive what they have. Love is shown in actions. How do I act? And then the first reading is very explicit about if somebody gives you their coat as collateral, give them back at, at night. It's a very consoling reading. But the gospel, who is my neighbor? It's not just the people next door, though sometimes the people next door are hard to be your neighbor, but to love them insofar as they allow themselves to be loved. Yes, I think that's arrangement. And so we look around in church and we go together to the Eucharist. And the person says, you are the body of Christ. And I say, amen. And so does the person behind me. Little, tall, wide. They are more than my neighbor. They are his brothers and sisters. So that I become the Eucharist to them as Jesus becomes the Eucharist to me. He makes us brothers and sisters by being our brother. Not an easy gospel to live. It's short, but living it is long. Prayer then is how he arranges our values, our sight.